We thank you all for your contributions and continued dedication to our organization and the preserve. All right. And speaking of some upcoming events, I also just wanted to notify everyone of a few events we have coming up, including the garlic mustard poll on Sunday, May 2nd from 1 to 3 p.m., 3.30 p.m. rather, as well as the spring planting on Saturday, May 22nd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Included, we also have the rain dates there as well. Um, Additionally, we want to thank you all also for joining us this evening to celebrate both a year in review and a future that is to come. And so with that, I would like to transition into the events for this evening. Um, first, I just wanted to acknowledge our annual meeting organizing team of Doris DeBilzig, Seth McGee, MJ Morgan, Tom Bryan, and Will Vike. Thank you also to our nominating committee, including Lillian Tong, Kelly Kearns, and Deborah Hobbins as well as our Lakeshore Nature Preserve Committee members, including Gary Brown, who will deliver the Lakeshore Nature Preserve report tonight. Finally, I would like to thank Emily Arthur, both for her time and enthusiasm to share her work with our membership as our distinguished speaker for this evening. All right, um, so now I just wanted to transition into um, just a review of some of the Zoom etiquette for tonight's event. And so we ask that all of you take the time to mute yourself by clicking on the mic icon that typically appears in the bottom left side of your screen. If the mic on displayed has a line through it, um, that just that indicates that you are currently muted. It should also appear red as well as you can see here. You, yeah, you can. Perfect, so we'll just give everyone a moment to do that. Um, if you ever have any questions or comments during the event, we will invite you to share those thoughts with us in the chat in the bottom menu as well. If you specifically have tech related questions, we will ask you to direct those questions to our tech masters, Tom Bryan and Will Vike in the chat as well. Finally, we recommend viewing our event tonight in speaker view, which will display whoever is currently speaking in a larger view than the other muted attendees on the call. To set your screen to speaker view, you should be able to click on the view button, which typically appears in the top right hand corner of your screen. You may have to move your mouse around for that um, button to appear and from there, you should be able to select either speaker or um, side by side speaker in the options that appear in the menu. Again, if you have any difficulties following this zoom guidance we direct um, we ask that you direct those questions to Tom Bryan and will Vike in the chat below. Alright, um, so then with that I just wanted to present an overview of tonight's agenda. We will start with the annual 2020 report given by our Vice President Seth McGee, followed by the recognition of retiring board members given by our newsletter editor MJ Morgan. We'll then um, continue with the election of our new and renewing board members, also going to be conducted by Vice President Seth McGee. From there, we will move into the UW-Madison Lakeshore Nature Preserve Director's Report given by the Director of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve, Gary Brown. And then finally, um, we will have our distinguished um, speaker, Emily Arthur, pre present um, her presentation and in indirect take the forward thinking ornithological art of Emily Arthur. Um, so with that, I will um, transition over to Seth. Thank you so much, Olympia. Can you, everybody hear me? Somebody give me a little, gotcha. All right, super. Well, hello friends and welcome to the 2021 Friends of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve Annual Meeting. Uh, I'm Seth McGee, I'm the Vice President of the organization and this is our second ever virtual annual meeting. Very exciting, I know. And despite the fact that we're still sort of here in this virtual world, we're actually quite thrilled about some of the opportunities that this year has brought about. And we'll share with you some of those fun developments tonight. Um, but one of them that's very apparent to me right now as I'm watching the participants list fill up here is, is that we're especially uh, pleased to be able to welcome friends tonight who might not have been able to join us in Madison otherwise. So I just want to send a warm welcome to all of you, both close and far. And uh, I want to encourage you all to sort of look down that list and, and look for some of your friends who maybe you haven't seen in a while and reach out to them. Send them a little chat over in the sidebar, uh, you know, shoot them an email, give them a call later or hang around 
right here after the meeting to uh, to catch up because you know although we've been separated this year uh, we don't have to be disconnected from each other and those little hellos that you're muted Seth oh sorry I'm getting someone's muting me uh, I'm not sure how much uh, how long I was I was muted there but I was I was just encouraging everybody to sort of reach out the folks that they see over in the uh, in the sidebar there in the participants list, and reach out and, and just send a hello, give a call, send an email, um, stick around, um, chat over Zoom or whatever, because those little connections that we can make right now, um, they're they're important and and they can help fill that void that a lot of people are feeling during the pandemic. So please do reach out to each other and stay connected. Okay, so tonight's going to be a very fun celebration, um, and I'm going to share my screen here and, and sort of try to get oriented. And uh, whoever has that power of muting me, man, a lot of people wish that they had that power. So you, you're really lucky. I, I apologize for that, Seth. I was admitting someone to the waiting room, and then your name went right underneath theirs, and I accidentally muted you. Much apologies. No, no, it's totally fine. You're just going to have to answer a lot of questions because a lot of people are going to be wanting to do that to me. Okay, let me find myself here. All right, can can folks see the shared screen? Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, so uh, I... Uh, I have to start tonight's meeting with a little bit of sad news, actually some extremely sad news. Um, it's with a very heavy heart um, to share this sad news with you. And, and many of you have already heard that we lost our dear friend and president of the Friends Organization, Steve Sentoff on Monday. Steve was volunteering in the preserve as he so often did when he fell ill, the heart condition was taken to the hospital. There he was in the company of his wife, Monica, and he was surrounded by the love of his family, but the doctors weren't able to save his life. And we send our deepest condolences to Monica, our dear friend, and to Steve's mother, his brothers, and his nieces and nephew. Steve's family has shared their wishes for those who are wondering about making donations in his memory that they can be directed to the Lakeshore Nature Preserve. And we'll share that link for you now in the chat window. There's also a memory wall that's been created to honor Steve's memory. And that link we'll also put in the chat window. And this is a place where everyone is invited to come and read and share memories of Steve. So please do stop by there and contribute. We'll also share these links on the Friends website. Steve wasn't one to linger when there was work to do. So in that spirit, I'm going to try to move on the best I can with the agenda. And in just a few minutes, MJ Morgan is going to share with us some of the many, many contributions um, that Steve made to the organization. But I do want to share very quickly personally, that when I first met Steve, he and Monica were fairly new to Madison, and we were both new to the board, and I fully expected to get along well with him, working on all these adventures and issues with the friends, but what I didn't expect was that Steve had become a, a good personal friend, and that probably happened to many of you who, who worked with him as well, so I just want to say that I'm thankful to have known Steve and that I'll miss him dearly. And I'm lucky enough um, to have received from Monica the slides that Steve made for tonight's meeting, along with his notes. So I'm proud to deliver for you his annual report with his slides in his own words now. Twenty twenty was a disruptive year for everybody. The Friends Organization 
had to make a lot of adjustments and concede many of the activities that were planned before the pandemic hit. You'll notice Steve's photo here of the Prairie Partner interns is from 2019. And that's because the preserve staff weren't able to host the student interns in the preserve this last summer due to COVID restrictions. This happy photo of these perennial working volunteers side by side, arm in arm in the preserve is also from 2019. Perennial volunteers is actually my words. You know, Steve wouldn't make a joke that cheesy. Uh, many of the restoration efforts like our drop, volunteer drop-in work day, working days had to be canceled. But the friends did their best to make lemonade out of lemons and they redirected their efforts to where they could still be effective. And don't worry, preserve staff, no actual lemonade was served. We were able to make contributions to the Preserve Stewardship Fund and contributed $15,000 towards work that could be done by contractors, furthering the progress of the long-term Eagle Heights Woods Restoration Project. As you may have noticed in our latest newsletter, we've also made a major special donation this year of $30,000 to help fund the Preserve Master Plan. We were able to hold two in-person field trips before COVID hit. And after that, we pivoted to self-guided field trips on a variety of topics hosted by a diverse group of local experts. And while nothing could substitute for in-person camaraderie on the trails, these virtual trips have actually been really great and they've been popular. And if you haven't checked them out, go to the Friends website and explore those. Uh, the one from last month is about lichens and it's, it's really great, so much fun and it's very interesting and so well produced. So I really encourage you to go check those out. It's a great way to learn. And uh, I think these will have a, a lasting role in the organization even after we get to start in-person trips again. Our communication platforms were enhanced this year as we depended on them to keep members connected with each other. We've put out regular newsletters and maintained the same high quality in those publications. And we increased usership of our website, which includes a really great blog where members can keep up on current happenings with the friends. The website also features a new phonology and history calendar. This is a wonderful new development in our organization in which users can visit the site and see what's blooming this week, who's migrating through, what's hatching out, things like that, and also interesting historical events that occurred at various times in the preserve. This is such a great endeavor, one that will also be a treasure to use and build on for years to come. Our citizen science projects went on in a socially distanced and COVID safe way. The Purple Martin Gourds housed and fledged Purple Martins over the summer, which is a big win. The Bluebird Trail continues to be a success and is still managed by the unwavering Bluebird monitoring team. And the lake water monitoring project continued. All of these important programs happened with COVID restrictions and safety measures in place. And while many normal events were canceled, the friends were able to find ways of achieving their goals. Though we had to cancel the annual spring planting event, we were able to purchase plants which were planted by the preserve staff. The usual very popular and very Productive garlic mustard pole was changed to a COVID safe program with the oversight of the preserve staff and 22 volunteers were still able to pick literally tons of garlic mustard last spring. I saw many of you tracing through the woods with those big black bags of weeds. The effects of this year have forced all of us to reassess our priorities and find ways to manage stress. Staying connected to nature has been a vital mechanism for many people. Even before the pandemic, the preserve was valued as a place of respite and well being. It has nourished the human spirit for thousands of years. At times like these, its worth is immeasurable. The preserve now has a visitor counter that 
the Pigna Point entrance. Even in harsh winter conditions, there are thousands of visitors a month and tens of thousands per month in nicer weather. We thank the university for protecting this place and sharing it with the community at large. The regular cycle of the seasons, of bird migrations, and of the blooming plants gives us a sense of continuity and reminds us of the resilience of nature. Quiet times in the preserve provide peace and serenity that we need so much right now. I want to thank the preserve staff for all that they have done, the workarounds that they have managed to put in place this year. And of course, I want to thank you all for the support you give to this place. You should all be proud of how much you have helped the preserve. Those were the pictures and the words that Steve left us with. And I have no doubt that he would be proud of his legacy that he's left here. His encouragement of respite, serenity, renewal, and well being will help us move forward and help us focus on making the preserve an even more special place to enjoy with each other and for generations to come. Thank you all again for being here. We have a really wonderful program ahead of us tonight. If you have questions about the annual report, feel free to send me an email or send me a chat message over there in the window. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to NJ Morgan to acknowledge our retiring directors. Thanks. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Well, I was very honored to be asked to recognize four really powerful retiring members. And before I talk about their gifts to the preserve over many years, I want to mention, of course, and remind everyone that all of their work has been volunteer for a place they love. Um, in thinking about volunteering, I realized that before I joined the Friends, um, which was in 2018, that I conceived of volunteering as a place, as kind of you show up somewhere and someone tells you what to do. That you go into a structure that's always been established and you put your, your energy in. But the Friends have taught me that volunteering can also be coming up with important ideas that energize and really add to the scope of an organization. Because I have seen this for myself in working um, over the past three years with these four retiring members. Um, I consider them powerhouses of initiative. And so I kind of want to uh, spend time looking at what they have done in terms of their ideas. Because that's just as important as coming and being told, you know, work over there, tear that plant out, um, we need ideas, um, no matter how frivolous or wild they may seem, they are going to contribute long-term to our organization. So our first retiree that I'm so happy to honor is Gisela Kutzbach. And you see her here with um, these wonderful purple Martin houses that she has worked on so long. Um, Gisela and her family have lived for years in the Shorewood area. Um, so she has had a very long association with the preserve and, and as a graduate student, she walked the many trails and pathways of the preserve as well. She loves natural environments and she says, I am aware of the delicate balance between the need for preserving natural areas and the need for public access. And walking that balance is something we all keep in mind that Gisela has done it so well. She was first elected to our board in 2008. In 2012, she served as vice president and then became president in 2013. Uh, she returned to the board as president in 2016, 2017, and then again in 2018. And she has just finished another three year term as a board member. In 2014, Gisela became our webmaster. And this has made a tremendous difference in our outreach and our communication with our membership. 
She is so skilled. She has worked steadily to update and streamline our webpage, including our blog, our archives, our mission, maps, sightings of flora and fauna, uh, little videos, clips, photographs. Uh, it's a very rich trove and Gisela maintains this. And I understand, I don't wanna badger her too much, but I understand that she is planning to continue this in retirement at great benefit to us. She is also um, an initiator of visionary and creative projects on a large scale. And the first one I wanna talk about is the 2011 Heritage Oak Project. And you see this wonderful, beautiful Heritage Burr Oak photograph. Um, she led the fundraising for this project, raising over $9,000 in one year for the restoration and creation of this little prairie savanna, oak savanna. Aldo Leopold said that trees are natural history textbooks and history textbooks. And notice the restored history in this photo. Um, a, a beautiful bur oak in a wide, unchoked environment. Many friends made this oak's health and freedom possible, but Gisela kept our vision strong and the funding active. By 2015, she was co-chairing another important restoration project, that of the preserved significant Eagle Heights woods, where bald eagles have been noted in tall oaks for over a century. Still ongoing six years later, the Eagle Heights woods restoration has received funds and gifts through Gisela's efforts. Her dedication has raised more than $145,000 for this breathtaking area. Again, note the scope of these projects. Two years later in 2017, the Friends launched projects dear to Gisela's heart, the erection of our Purple Martin houses in Biocal Prairie and the creation of the Eastern Bluebird Nesting Box Trail. The organizing and mentoring of the citizen science members who check these boxes and check the fledglings and protect them from predators and are constantly feeding data back to Gisela for the website she has undertaken all of this to keep these projects going. I could speak more and more about Gisela's contributions because she has been with us for so long and we will miss her so much. But I want to end by words that she herself said. I asked her what had been most meaningful to her in the preserve. And she said, I treasured the friendships I could form over more than a decade by working and learning together with our board members and with many volunteers among our membership. I felt part of a community committed to sharing, serving, learning and helping make the preserve an ever more beautiful place. The preserve that I have loved for more than 50 years. Thank you, Gisela. Our next member also leaving us, Doris Debilzig. She's a longtime science educator and teacher mentor. Doris is one of the most naturally curious and enthusiastic about learning people I know. She has steadfast devotion to education and how the preserve can foster love of nature through knowledge. Lucky for us, she brought that passion to the preserve and to the friends. Here you see her likely waiting for one of her field trips to begin. Doris joined the board in 2014 and immediately joined our education and outreach committee. She has worked for six years to showcase the friend's love of the preserve at the UW Madison Science Expeditions. This has meant organizing a string of hands-on exhibits at learning booths. If you've ever tried to organize a large number of volunteers while protecting the environment and welcoming many parents and children you know the effort and dedication this takes. She was elected secretary in 2015, vice president in 2017, and friends president in 2018. She has often chaired our annual meeting committee. And last fall, it was Doris who pushed us to try our first virtual annual meeting. We were all nervous. We didn't think we could do it. And it was Doris who said, we need to do it. We need to, to put our presence out there for our membership. She helped us to keep our communication channels open with her suggestions and brainstorming. Some of her most recent ideas and projects, all successful, 
include with Steve Sentoff initiating the Friends in becoming a Clean Lake Alliance forecasting steward. This involved nearshore water sampling of Lake Mendota all last summer. Doris created and made happen the most memorable and unusual educational field trip I have ever been on, bringing in talented leaders in everything from lichens to soil structure, owl walks, outdoor bee and honey bee walks, warbler viewing, preserve history, marsh ecology, ethnobotany, and many more. Not just anyone can visualize how exciting an educational a field trip can be and pursue presenters on this topic. This requires an understanding of what I always call the teachable moment. And I think you have to have been a teacher to know that. In 2019, Doris created our first boardwalk, wherein board members shared their own interests and backgrounds with members while walking through a preserve. She then went right on to develop a virtual boardwalk last fall single-handedly, complete with maps, member stories and quotes, fascinating photos, and even some taped commentary. This was definitely another Doris Bielzig project characterized by a persevering leader. Doris says she is most proud of her field trips, fascinating speakers, and the boardwalk she organized. And those seem to me to be the words of a born educator. Thank you, Doris. Lillian Tong, who I saw here earlier, so I know she's with us. Lillian is retiring from the Friends this year after a powerful term of service. The amount of important directional change that Lil brought to us in a short time continues to amaze me. Here you see her with her dog, Mabel, with whom she takes many walks. This in turn grew out of her love of backpacking, hiking, and canoeing in wild places. So after retiring from a research and educational career at UW-Madison, she joined the Friends bringing a personal vision of inclusion and outreach. In 2018, Lil was elected to the board and immediately began work on the Education and Outreach Committee. Her goals included increasing the attendance of and involvement with multicultural and disadvantaged Madison community groups, as well as UW students. These goals energized us and spread to other committees and other projects. In her first year, working with then UW student Olympia Mathia Paranam, if I've not pronounced that correctly, I'm sorry, Olympia. Um, Lil initiated student and community recruitment to the Preserve and Friends through the Bio Commons in Steenbach Library. I believe that outreach is her true calling, one that we have very much needed in the Friends. Because of Lil's commitment in 2019 with Olympia and Steve Sintoff, she organized a table for the friends at the UW-Madison South Madison Partnership Celebration. The table held insects, bird nests, magnifying glasses, interesting handouts, things to touch and feel and stroke and squeal about. The display attracted a diverse group of children and adults, the result of friends collaborating and sharing all kinds of ideas. New people from different communities were invited to learn about the preserve and the friends, and this was because of Lil. Early in 2020, before the pandemic took hold, Lil worked with Olympia and Friends members to organize our first open mic poetry slam at UW. The original poetry about nature shared by many writers was so meaningful that the open mic migrated to a virtual platform poetry reading in 2021, just last February. The Open Mic Project underscores that the preserve supports humanities and the arts, as well as science. Lil says, I guess what I like best is when I can gather together a group of people and that group comes up with a collaborative effort, which combines everyone's creative ideas. Gathering together diverse voices and ideas to work together is Lillian's message to us. She taught us to think about outreach and education in new ways. Thank you, Lil. My last presentation of tribute is very special. Tonight, we are all thinking of and honoring Steve Sentoff, 
who was retiring from the board to work more consistently in restoration, his first love. Steve brought so much experience into the Friends. He had volunteered with the DuPage County, Illinois Forest Preserve District for 25 years and was volunteer site steward for the West Chicago Prairie Stewardship Group. So he really had a lot of knowledge. Because of his unflagging volunteer work in the preserve, especially the removal of invasive species, Steve was one of the preserve's few and perhaps most trusted volunteer stewards. He has volunteered for physical work in the preserve consistently through his tenure with the Friends, and many have found his expert knowledge just extremely valuable. I know I have. He really helped me during our first spring planting. Um, I just did not know what I was doing. I couldn't identify the plants easily, and he was right there, so kind, no judgments. He joined the Friends Board in 2017. He was elected secretary, and by 2018, he was vice president. In one year, 2019, he accomplished so much, so many specific projects for the Friends, and so much representation and outreach. In 2019, working with preserve staff, Steve organized an annual wildflower spring plant planting. He cheered on as many volunteers who worked to plant new forbs, grasses, and bushes in Bill's woods learned how to do it. He was a wonderful teacher. That same year with Doris, Steve initiated the Friends Becoming a Clean Lake Alliance Forecasting Steward, which I've talked about before. Also with Doris, he organized that first boardwalk. With Lillian and Olympia, he volunteered for the UW Madison South Madison celebration and talked with enthusiasm to visitors at the Friends table. Steve was elected Friends president in 2020. He faithfully attended preserve committee and preserve stakeholder meetings and also various environmental conferences and symposiums around Madison. This was very important to me because I saw him repeatedly seeking ways to tie the friends and their mission to broader goals, broader visionary uh, projects through larger organizations. He participated in many ad hoc meetings with the preserve staff as well. His dedicated presence speaks to what he said about his connection with the friends. Most important for him was the strengthening of communication between the Friends and the UW Preserve staff, as well as improving communication in smaller venues, such as our field trip. He was committed with a personal ethic to the bonds that tie us to a particular natural place. Modest, quiet, and warm, Steve was more effective and achieved more in his short time with the Friends than he could ever know. Thank you, Steve. And now I think I'm turning it back to Olympia. Yes, thank you, MJ, for your recognition of the retiring board members. At this point, we will transition back to Vice President Seth McGee for the election of the board members and renewal of board members. All right, thanks again, Olympia. And thank you so much, MJ, for those really heartfelt uh, acknowledgements. So you have to listen to me for a couple more minutes here, but it's my pleasure to introduce um, a really impressive uh, slate of new board member candidates. Um, and maybe what we can do is uh, I'll say each candidate's name and, and you, if you can, if you want to, you can unmute and, and say a quick hello and that way you'll bump up um, to the top of everybody's Brady Bunch screen if, if people are doing those. Um, so our first uh, candidate is Dane Gallagher. Dane, come on down. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Dane. Thank you. Uh, Dane grew up in Sun Prairie and is a second year vet med student at UW-Madison. Following graduation, he hopes to work with shelter and wild animals. When he's not inundated with schoolwork, you can find him napping alongside his two feline friends, Bear and Goose. I bet that's Bear or Goose right there. Or birding at the Lakeshore Nature Preserve. He's very excited to get involved in this wonderful community.
community. Welcome, Dane. Next is Signe Holtz. Signe, I think I saw your name here. Hello. Hi, Signe. Signe was born in Columbus, Wisconsin. We're so glad to see you. Uh, while an undergraduate at UW-Madison, she spent many hours walking the paths of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve. She received a master's degree in native plant community restoration and management and has held several positions at the DNR. Signe led a team that developed the Wisconsin Ecological Landscapes Map. She finished her career at the DNR as the director of the Bureau of Endangered Resources. Wow. The first uh, wildlife action plan was developed under her leadership. Signe and her husband, Ron, live in Madison and have walked the trails around Frouchy and Picnic Points for many years. Welcome, Signe. Next, we have Ann Pierce. Ann, come on down. Hello. Hi, Ann. Originally from Northern Minnesota, Ann has lived in Madison for 10 years. During that time, she's crossed nearly every foot of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve while working on class projects, managing invasive plants as a Prairie Partners intern, and as a seasonal employee or birding and running. She has degrees in soil science and biology and a master's degree in water resources management from the UW-Madison. She currently coordinates the Wisconsin First Detector Network, statewide invasive species monitoring program. Welcome, Anne. Okay, and we also have some renewing board members. Uh, Matt, Matt is up next. Let me find my notes on Matt. Matt Schutlos, hey, are you here? I there am. he is. <laughs> Matt, you might be giving me a run for the money on um, biggest uh, facial hair changes during the pandemic. Every time I see you, you got something new. I love it. Uh, Matt's a recent graduate from UW-Madison in biology. Um, he's working as a clinical lab scientist at Exact Sciences on the weekend. He can be found somewhere outside during the rest of the week. He hopes to continue his focus on fish ecology in graduate school. Matt has led the Friends Summer Water Monitoring um, for the Clean Lakes Alliance. He's led stations for the Friends during UW Science Expeditions, and he's written for our newsletter. Super glad to have you back, Matt. Okay, who's up next? Steve Salwood. Hey, everybody. Hi, Steve. Hello. Steve Selwood currently serves as treasurer of the Friends Board of Directors. Thank you so much, Steve. After spending his formative years in Northern Wisconsin and a brief stint in Kansas, Steve settled in Madison almost 20 years ago. He currently works for TRC, an environmental consulting firm, where he conducts environmental investigations at properties with soil and groundwater contamination. Steve, that sounds like we could make this into a TV show of some sort. Let's, let's think about that. In his free time, Steve enjoys exploring new areas to hike and watching his two sons play sports. Super glad to have you back, Steve. And Will Vike. Hello, everyone. Will Vike is a junior at UW-Madison studying biology and history. He's excited for another year with the friends. Will has written in our newsletter, helped with friends field trips. Uh, he's worked with the outreach committee, provided photos for the blog, and helped organize and lead the second annual It's In Our Nature Friends Poetry event, which by the way is one of the coolest things that, that happened this year. If you haven't checked out the, um, the recorded poetry that was done by a lot of our friends, it's on the webpage, and the team has turned it into this uh, really cool audio and video nature hike. So you can go there pull it up on your phone and then take a hike around the nature preserve and uh, listen to poems from your friends here. It's really uh, soul charging, check that out. Okay, Will, where were we? On cold days, you may find Will doing an odd sort of windmill dance in the preserve. Not to be alarmed, he's simply using centrifugal force to return the blood to his easily frozen fingers. Glad to have you back, Will. Thank you, and glad it's warmer now. Yeah, hopefully we won't see your funny dance for eight or nine months. 
Okay, is that everyone? Next slide. All right, so now it's time to vote, which is why we have all the, the fine print here. Um, so the way this is gonna work is um, Tom Bryan uh, will start a, a poll that will pop up in a little bit for you. Um, all current members of the Friends of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve that are present are eligible to vote. In accordance with our bylaws, we welcome additional nominations to the chat function here on Zoom. The Friends Nominee Committee, consisting of Lillian Tong, Deborah Hobbins, and Kelly Kearns, recommends the following candidates, and the Board of Directors has endorsed this recommendation. So please take a second to provide your vote on the following question. Do you support the board endorsed nominees becoming remaining directors for the Friends of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve? And we'll give you a few seconds to vote. If anyone's having issues with the voting, you can um, always send a chat. If you wanna um, just chat me over there in the sidebar, you can send me a direct chat what your vote is. All right, and we'll just allow for a Few more seconds. And then once that poll is closed, what we'll do is we'll tally the votes, go back to the, the vote counting machines in the back here, and uh, we'll report on those results at the end of the meeting. So now I'd like to introduce the director of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve, Gary Brown who's going to share with us the director's report. Uh, thank you for being here, Gary. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Seth. Uh, I think I'll have um, Olympia share my slides. Thanks. All right, good evening, everyone. Again, Gary Brown, the director of the Lakeshore Nature Preserve with Facilities Planning Management here at the university. Just wanna spend a few minutes updating you on some of the great uh, things that have been happening um, over the last year and all the amazing activities that actually have occurred, even though we've been in this very strange pandemic world. So next slide, please. Um, if you've been following along, you know that last year and the prior year in 2019, we were developing a strategic plan for the preserve. Part of that process uh, developed a new vision and mission for the Lakeshore Nature Preserves. Our vision is to foster biodiversity on campus and cultivate lifelong environmental engagement. So it's really important for us as we've developed the overall strategic plan to help really establish what our vision is and also our mission and really defining it in a way that it's easily memorable and easily usable by the many, many people that come to the preserve and use the preserve for teaching, outreach, and education. So as we look at that, the mission of uh, the Lakeshore Nature Preserve is that we shelter natural environments and cultural resources through active learning, research, and outreach in a place of respite and well-being. We heard loud and clear during our strategic planning process that the preserve really is a place of respite and well being. And we now know that uh, based on much of the data that we were able to gather um, over the last year with our trail counter now at the head of Picnic Point, really understanding how many people come and go. And we've seen a significant increase both visually and now based on the data that we have. So it's an amazing thing to understand how many people are actually using the preserve. But now we know that we've had an increase based on this crazy world of pandemics that we've had over the last year, allowing people to get out into nature and really relax and get away from some of the chaos that they've been seeing in their lives. Next. I wanna take just a quick minute also to recognize the staff and the people that work for you as the Lakeshore Nature Preserve team. Um, we have Laura Wyatt, who's our Minister of Program Manager, Laura really manages the day-to-day -day operations of the preserve. 
Uh, Rhonda James is a senior landscape architect in my office and she supports the preserve in design and planning and projects that are happening out in the preserve. Adam Gunlock, our field projects coordinator, uh, helps manage things in the field. He's out on the land and has been out on the land over the last 12 months. Even though he's had to work from home, I know he's been out doing a lot of things in the field and keeping the preserve as safe and usable as we could over uh, the last 12 months. Bryn Scriver, a volunteer and outreach coordinator, has also done an excellent job in helping manage things during the pandemic from outreach and fundraising activities to continue to monitor and prepare for volunteer activities if and when we can have them back out in the field. She's been managing our volunteers that um, have been regularly coming out uh, to work in uh, small teams of their households to help manage the preserve as well. So thank you all for the amazing work that you've been doing over the last 12 months and during this trying time. I would note that in the right corner, there are um, some open positions that we're currently recruiting for. We have some seasonal staff that we uh, have posted for and we'll be doing interviews for in the coming weeks. Next. So just a quick report on some of the activities we've been doing. Uh, these are from uh, last year, 2020. We've had 13, or, I'm sorry, 38 teaching and research permits issued, 25 of which are long-term permits. Uh, those are represented by 25 departments and programs with two governmental agencies and seven community organizations and four geocache permits. So interesting to see geocache is still something active out in the preserve and in our community. Unfortunately, we didn't have any student engagement grants this past year due to the pandemic. I am happy to report, though, that just very recently we were able to um, approve some new student engagement grants for this fiscal year, and uh, the students will be out starting their research soon in those areas. Our volunteers, even though uh, small over the last 12 months, they've been strong and helped out and kept things going in the preserve for us. We had 76 volunteers, almost 60% of those being students on campus with a little over 2,000 service hours or a value of over $54,000. Eight campus and community groups were represented in that group. And um, unfortunately, no Friends Spring Planting event or annual garlic mustard pull-a-thon, even though we were out there pulling garlic mustard um, with our black bags as individuals. Um, we were able to keep up as best we could with the garlic mustard and we'll be doing that again and are already out in the field doing that now. And unfortunately, no Prairie Partner interns last year. Uh, we are working hard to make sure that happens this year as well. Next. From a land management standpoint, uh, we mentioned garlic mustard. Uh, we did get um, out into the field with a very hardy group of people and we're able to uh, work on garlic mustard removal across 90 of our 300 acres. We covered uh, almost 35 acres in invasive brush removal and reef sprout control, burned 15 brush piles, um, really specifically looked at porcelain berry control again in about 35 acres. We were lucky enough to do some prescribed burns uh, last year and actually um, this year we were able to do even more. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing a lot of burning in the preserve and we were able to collect some native seeds out there to help supplement the purchase seeds and the sowing of about 11 acres of the preserve. From a fundraising development standpoint, in 2020, we had 126 donors contributing over $113,000. Um, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for all of the friends who were part of that process. Also, uh, we participated in the Fill the Hill program from the Wisconsin Foundation Alumni Association, um, and that uh, provided us with 29 donors, 19 of which were new donors. Next. So every year we develop an annual work plan. If you've come to some of our public stakeholder meetings, uh, we have two of those, one in the fall, usually September, October, and then another one in January. And we look at developing a work plan to help focus our uh, small team and the efforts that we're doing out in the field. Um, you can see here, and I'm not going to read through each of these, but we do have a set of land management objectives, outreach and information access objectives, site infrastructure, administrative support, and capital support for other major projects that are happening in and around the preserve. Um, I do note that there is always 
a lot more that we could be doing, but it's important for us to try and prioritize our time and the work that we're doing because we do have such a small staff. Uh, next slide. So we do have a set of what's called key performance indicators. So how are we doing? How do we measure success in all of the work that Seth, can you hear me? I can hear you now. You cut out for a second. Okay. Yep. I had the dreaded three beeps, um, and I think I must have uh, lost connection quickly. So again, we are in the process of implementing our strategic plan. We've consolidated and clarified our mission and vision. That's complete. Uh, we are in the process of developing and implementing a communications plan. We are continuing to grow our resources and our volunteer capacity. And uh, we're working on our strategic partnerships. Um, process improvements are all underway. And I'm happy to report that we're uh, continuing to work on the uh, hiring of a consultant to develop the update to the 2006 Lakeshore Nature Preserve Master Plan. So that's all underway. We're doing great work in a strategic plan. Uh, many of us working from our home offices, but we're still getting a lot done. Uh, volunteer and stakeholder feedback um, is provided whenever we have an outdoor uh, volunteer event. We always check in with our volunteers to see how they felt about the event. And were there any things we could do differently? Did they learn something? Always important and one of our goals when we do our volunteer events. Um, we also then track those volunteers and understand if they're tied to any of the research that we have on campus. Uh, we also track all the academic activities on campus as well via permit process. Um, and then we do, as I mentioned, have two annual stakeholder meetings, one in October or late September, and then one in uh, mid to late January. We also publish annual reports. So that's all part of our stakeholder feedback and outreach initiatives. Um, I will note the fundraising programs that we participated in. I mentioned Fill the Hill, the National Day of Giving, the end of year appeal, and then also um, over the full year of 2020, we were able to see 126 gifts, realizing over $113,000. I do have some good breaking news, though. Uh, the Day of the Badger here in 2021, that just wrapped up at 5 p.m. today. We had over 49 donors totaling uh, $5,060. And with the match from the Friends organization, uh, you all provided us with the ability to raise um, over $9,000. So that's an amazing thing to do in the 1,848 minutes of the Day of the Badger, which is tied right to the 1848 date of the um, first opening classes of uh, UW-Madison. So I do wanna note that and thank you all for participating if you did in the Day of the Badger over the last two days. Um, I would note that those of you who may have been giving and are interested in uh, designating your gift in memory of Steve Sentoff, we will be providing the Friends Organization with a contact uh, at the UW Foundation and she will be able to help update your records so that you have that um, associated with your gifts that were part of the Day of the Badger today. Um, we also continue to work on program growth. That's very important for us and looking at how we can continue to support the research and teaching mission of the university. Next. Um, I mentioned the preserve master plan update. Um, I participated in the 2006 initial master plan for the preserve. We are now working towards and thank you for providing funds for us to do that. Um, as I mentioned, we're hiring a consultant team now to move us forward in the update of that master plan. We hope to have a kickoff meeting here soon. Um, we'll be working on context background and doing some site analysis in late spring, early summer, looking at a framework for the planning process then throughout the summer and continuing that site analysis doing some public stakeholder meetings. Um, maybe yet this spring we'll do one and the second one will probably come towards fall and then one towards the end as we wrap up the overall master plan process. So please watch for that. We'll have updates on our website as we move that entire process forward. Next slide. And I think this is it. Again, thank you so much for all of the great support you've been providing the Lakeshore Nature Preserve. It's really extremely important for us, um, not only from a financial standpoint, but just in getting out and helping us 
do the mission of the university and providing that research, teaching and outreach mission that really is integral to everything that we do in the Lakeshore Nature Preserve. Uh, just noting here, the Friends 2020 gift of $4,000 to our stewardship account, along with the $15,000 for the Eagle Heights Woods project and 30,000 for the master plan update. These are all things that Seth mentioned early on, but again, it's uh, important to remind folks that the Friends organization is a very integral part of what we do here in the Lakeshore Nature Preserve at UW-Madison. So thank you again. I uh, appreciate all your support and on Wisconsin. All right, thank you so much for your wonderful report, Gary Brown. Um, so at this point, we will stop sharing that PowerPoint presentation, and I will invite Emily Arthur to start sharing her presentation at this time, as we will begin to um, introduce our distinguished speaker for the evening. And so I'll just give Emily Arthur just a second to set up, and then we'll get started. All right, perfect. Um, so now I'm really excited to introduce our distinguished speaker for this evening, Emily Arthur. So Emily Arthur, Eastern Band Cherokee descent, is an associative professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and chair of the printmaking area. She grew up in Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida, receiving a master's in fine arts from Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Passionate about printmaking, um, sorry. Passionate about printmaking for over 20 years, Emily Arthur also served as a fellow at the Barnes Foundation for Advanced Theoretical and Critical Research. Her additional education includes Rhode Island School of Design and the University of Georgia and the Tamarin Institute. Emily Arthur is a notable woman in the arts, a member of the National Museum of Women in the Arts, and has been nominated for a Joan Mitchell Foundation Painters and Sculptors Grant. Her work is included in the permanent collections of the St. Louis Art Museum, Tweed Art Museum, Denver Art Museum, Museum of Contemporary Native American Arts, Minneapolis Institute of Art, and the Minnesota American Museum of Art. She has lived in Madison since 2014, and you can find her work in Madison on permanent display at the Chazen Museum of Art and on the ceiling of the Hilton Hotel in downtown Madison. We are so grateful for Emily Arthur's time and enthusiasm to be with us here tonight to share her work and our um, to share her work with us on um, the membership. So please join me in welcoming Emily Arthur. <laughs> 